Hi, this is Andre, and thanks for checking out Simpicipi. Simpicipi is integrating the wisdoms of history, based on fact and truth, into present culture. The roots mean synthesis, history, and sophie, as in philosophy. Sophie, the Greek root meaning wisdom, knowledge. Today we're going to be talking about chapter 27, the upside down bell curve. And more specifically, how the upside down bell curve relates to our society today. So, remember the bell curve? The regular bell curve refers to a normal distribution of values over a range. The blue line here is the distribution of human height, the midpoint being 5 feet 6, with the number of taller and shorter moving down and away from the average, making the shape of a bell. The red curve is the normal bell curve. So you can see that the distribution of human height is quite close to the normal bell curve. Now, let's take a look at the polarization of the U.S. population in this Pew Research Center publication from 2017. Look at the diagrams of the politically engaged in 1994 2004, 2014, and 2017. Notice a development over time. Democrats keep moving farther and farther left. Republicans keep moving farther and farther right. And by 2017, you can see the upside down bell curve. I would bet by now, that the polarization of the U.S. might look like this, even more polarized in 2017. You can see a greater widening in depth of the upside-down bell curve and less overlap. I'd call it hyperpolarization, and that's where we are today. This shows us the polarization of the left and right and the upside down bell curve now present in the USA. If the bell curve is considered normal, why do we, as a society, have an upside down bell curve? Is that abnormal? Why are we so polarized? The answer lies in the human brain and neurological evolution. It's in our genes. It's been in our genes for a very long time. Cognitive bias probably developing over the course of late mammalian evolution and present in Australopithecus. To confirmation bias in Homo habilis. To the tribe in argumentative theory where truth doesn't matter, winning the argument and gaining power does in Homo erectus. All the while generating the tribal ethos resulting in the warrior ethos that led Homo sapiens out of Africa 70,000 years ago to dominate the world. Our genetically evolved and present cognitive confirmation, tribal, and argumentative biases shape our polarized perceptions of the world around us. And our warrior ethos finds others of similar mind to battle the opposing party. Do we have to be this polarized? Can individual human consciousness be aware of this predisposition and keep it in check, putting value in moderation, reason, and truth? Can we be more nereal? Think of it this way. Over the four million years of human evolution, from Australopithecus to Homo habilis to Homo erectus, and now us, Homo sapiens, the human brain has tripled in size. Most significantly, in the neocortex, the new brain. This large size and complexity of the neocortex in humans is linked to high level cognitive functions like reasoning, language, and consciousness. Whereas our fight or flight response, anger and fear, is a primal instinct generated in the amygdala. 
in the center and the very primitive part of the brain. And these primal waves of fear and anger override the neocortex. and are seen today in the threats, hate, and violence in our polarized society. And oh, by the way, the online algorithms are playing to these emotions of anger and fear to keep eyeballs glued to the screen and to make the tech companies more money. So maybe if we become aware of this primal predisposition, this overwhelming anger and fear, take a step back, use the neocortex call out the online algorithms and companies using them, and we can start putting value in moderation, reason, and truth. Recall Ben Franklin's question after the Constitutional Convention? We've given you a republic. Can you keep it? Perhaps if we depolarize, get back to the normal bell curve, become more neural, take a step back from the overwhelming emotions instinctively generated by the amygdala, use the neocortex for reason, moderation, and truth, and become more centrist as a nation, the answer will be yes.